an engineer's natural inclination is to do more with less. Mm -hmm. Use fewer materials, make it smaller, make it more electrically efficient. Hi, I'm Ajay Kumar, home editor at CNET, and I'm here with James Dyson in the Dyson Soho store. We are here to talk about some of the awesome products here. I know very little about beauty products. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what makes this so interesting? Yes, well, we started, um, this is a conventional motor in a hairdryer mm -hmm. uh, that exists, and that's the heater. And they're big, heavy objects right at the top of the machine. Mm -hmm. So it's heavy and difficult to maneuver. And we have been developing high-speed motors, which have much more force than you get from this type of, of crude fan. And we knew that we could therefore make a very small hairdryer and even put the motor in the handle. So unbelievably, when you hold, this is our first hairdryer, the supersonic. When you hold the supersonic, uh, you're actually holding the, the motor spinning at 130,000 RPM. So we started developing very high speed electric motors, getting it at 120, 130,000 RPM, instead of 20 or 30,000. So it's you know, five times faster. If you go faster, you can make the motor smaller, and it also makes it more electrically efficient. So it sounds great, but it's difficult to develop, and it took us about 10 years to develop it. <laughs> but the result is that we're able to make these very high speed, quieter, much lighter, using far fewer materials, far fewer copper, all that sort of thing, uh, and make light, slim products, which everybody wants. This is our latest air wrap, uh, where you, you, we're using airflow to shape curls. Okay, so uh, all so the curls I don't have. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And we use what's called the coander effect. So if you, if you set air off roughly going around a cylinder like this, mm -hmm. uh, it hugs the cylinder and a, a man called Coanda discovered this effect, actually with an aircraft, he was doing it, he, he wanted it for aircraft technology. He got into trouble though, because the aircraft caught fire <laughs> and the flames hugged the fuselage, which was the Coanda effect. So he almost got burnt by his own, own invention. Um, anyway, we meant that won't happen to us today. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, um, and now we can use it safely for, for we, hair. You could use it <laughs> safely for hair. So we, we have um, uh, the attachment ID, so RFID, so you, it knows what attachment you fitted. And if you use the app on your, on your phone, you can uh, put in what hair type you've got and what style you want. And the, the air app automatically does that style for you. So the pencil vac is probably the most interesting of your lineup that I, I've seen. I, I was able to use it briefly earlier. The design is so interesting, and I, I'm just uh, curious, where do you see this uh, really fitting in people's homes? Well, if you, if you put it, it's just so easy to use. Mm. Uh, when you want to use it, you just grab hold of it and start it up, and it's, it floats, and it's, uh, it can go sideways, backwards, We've illuminated the dirt and it runs along the edge because the brush bars stick out a little bit. So I can literally go to the very edge like that. And if you wrap something round a cone, mm -hmm. it goes off down to the smallest end. So any hair, dog hairs, human hairs, however long, however long is important, mm -hmm. just simply get discharged. And then you just into, into a ball and then you just vacuum it up. So it never tangles. You don't have to clear anything ever. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, pushing it off to the side it's pushing and off getting it. I really see it being useful for uh, quick cleanups. Um, I'm curious if you see it as um, a replacement for an existing cordless vacuum, or do you see it more of a supplement to uh, a cordless vacuum? Like, is well, it an assistant? Yeah. For me, it, once you've used that, that's mm -hmm. the only vacuum cleaner you ever <laughs> want to use. It's so light and easy to use and effective. And of course, it's powered by this, you know, our latest uh, tiny motors. And that, it's that that makes it possible. Do you see uh, this type of uh, dustbin system coming to other uh, Dyson products in, in the lineup in the future? We'll wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a very nice ejection system. And it's got a hot swappable battery as well. So you can take, you can, um, you know, if you think the runtime isn't enough, if yeah. 30, 30 minutes or 60 oh, wow. minutes isn't enough, you can have another one of those and just hot swap it and carry on. So this is the Dyson Wash G1, so you can use this to clean your floors? Clean your floors and wash your floors. And wash your floors. And it has two rollers, one at the back and one at the front. So it cleans, well it cleans double well, <laughs> but also it cleans just as well going backwards as going forwards. 
so you don't have to always go forwards like using a lawnmower. Oh, okay. You can go backwards and forwards. Uh, and it's all the water going onto the roller is fresh water, mm. unlike a mop and bucket where you're putting dirty water back on the again floor. Again and again, yeah. So, so the, 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 uh, the rope, most rollers are effectively cleaned on every rotation. This is the Dyson Clean Plus Wash. But this one's slightly different in that all the dirt and everything stays down there and you take that. So everything is in the brush head? Uh, yes, so that, that, those are the tanks um, of, dirty, of dirty stuff. So the dirty water and any debris right. goes up into that and you take that to the sink to empty it. The point about both these systems is they'll pick up surface debris. You can't suck dirt out of a carpet with them. Right. But they'll pick up surface debris hygienically. There's, there's, there's no hidden dirty filter or dirty duct or anything. You can wash everything every time. So it's the only hygienic system. So this is the Dyson Hush Jet. Um, it's your new air purifier. I'm seeing a really interesting design change on this. It looks mm. like a, a jet engine almost. It is a bit like a jet engine, except unlike a jet engine, it's very quiet. Yeah. It's actually on now and you can't hear it. Yeah, I can't hear it at all. But it's on. And uh, we've done that by this special arrangement here, which does look a bit like an outlet of a jet engine, but it's all about silencing and improving the airflow. So it does both. And this is a significant design change from your, some of your previous air purifiers. Do you find that it cleans more of the air in a room compared to the yes. previous models? Yeah, that's a very good point. It's got a higher airflow and uh, for the same electricity consumption. Mm. There's very little resistance and it's quiet. So you're purifying effectively, efficiently for use of electricity and quietly. And also um, it sniffs. So it comes on automatically. If you have it on auto, it's constantly sniffing and testing the, the purity of the air. So yes, it, it, and it'll give you a week's worth of um, performance on that chart. So one of the overarching themes I've been hearing as we've been discussing some of these products is that you're really focused on getting noise levels down, the design more streamlined, lighter. Is that a big challenge? Uh, do you f ever feel like you are compromising on performance by trying to reduce the size too much? We never compromise on performance. Never. We want to improve performance, not <laughs> compromise on it. So that, but an engineer's natural inclination is to do more with less. Mm -hmm. Use fewer materials, make it smaller, make it more electrically efficient. Uh, and at the same time, enhance performance. And performance is cleaning the room, but it's also not making a noise and being easy to clean and being smaller. So that's what engineers want to do, and that's what we do all the time. We constantly change, constantly develop. You know, previously we had our wonderful fans without a blade in them, with a, with a very interesting system of multiplying the airflow. So we've now moved on to another era. We, we're constantly improving, constantly wanting to change things and make things better. It's a disease that engineers have, <laughs> but it's a good disease. I mean, I think I was reading that your first uh, bagless vacuum, you had over 5,000 prototypes before you had one that you brought to market. Uh, is that still uh, true for all of these products? Or is it, are, we, are you doing thousands of prototypes before you have settle yeah. on something where you're yes. happy with it? Yes, is the answer to that. Okay, <laughs> it's 5,127 prototypes. Oh, wow. so I got it right. No, we still do that. I mm -hmm. mean, of course, now you can do a lot by CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics. Mm -hmm. So that helps, but you still have to build lots of prototypes to improve and improve and improve. So you're, you're never satisfied, really. <laughs> and we're going on improving it. Uh, just because we brought out a product doesn't mean we stop development. It multiplies again. It's fun. I mean, it sounds, it sounds tedious, but actually it's very exciting. So we've talked about a lot of products here. Is there one where you had a kind of surprising um, design failure that taught you a lot about what you wanted to do? We always have design failures. One of the things about uh, exploring new technology and new ways of doing things is you're going to have lots of failures on the way. Mm -hmm. I actually find them quite exciting because I want to know why they failed. That's, a, that's always much more interesting than why something works. Um, but no, I, I'm of course always excited about the latest product and the ones that are coming on in the future. But the ones that you see around us, some are uh, um, you know, more than a few months old, they're still children to me. You know, <laughs> we created them, you know, we, we love them still. 
thank you for uh, walking us through all the products here at the Dyson Soho store. Um, it's been great learning about the design language. Well, it's great <laughs> to talk to you, AJ, yeah. uh, from our, what was the fire station. Yeah, what was once a fire uh, station. It was once a fire, an operational <laughs> fire station. And it's now where you can see demonstrated all the Dyson products. So I invite everybody to come and see it.